All right, the team of fans, we're talking Season 1, Episode 7, Trouble at Home. Okay, I'm going to score the episode, but don't be mad. 7 out of 10. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I do feel like the scene between Zach and Bryce, well, drunk Zach and Bryce, that did drag on a bit too long. When I looked at the episode runtime, it was like 36 minutes. And I'm like, eh, I mean, this scene, it was trimmed down, which honestly it should have been. This episode would have been a nice 30 minutes because episode eight was, you know, 30 minutes, like pretty much on the nose. But when I looked at this episode, I'm like, yeah, it could have been shorter than it was. But aside from that, let's jump in. Now, Fatima is pissed over the photo and she's about to grab her bag because it turns out she wants to stay in Angela's for the night because she's about to bounce. Angela calls Bryce and Zach in the car is, you know, pretty passed out drunk, but he does have his shirt. So they managed to find his shirt before leaving the party, which I'm actually happy about. I'm like, Lord, if Zach shows up without a shirt, it ain't going to be too good. So, um, Bryce tells, um, you know, or actually, Angela tells Bryce to kind of drive slow. That way they don't make it home by the time, you know, Fatima's still there. Because she doesn't want to talk to Zach right now. And as a result, Zach actually wakes up because he heard everything. And he's like, fine, you know, hey, don't drive slow. I need to go home and piss. So, they're on the way back. Now, they make it just in the nick of time. Because Fatima and Angela are headed out the door. And... Lord, this is where things get crazy. So drunk Zach is like, fine, I hope you left your key. What the fuck did you just say? And they're pretty much going back and forth. But the thing is, she flashes the picture of him dancing with Deja. It's like, oh, you know what, bitch? I got to fuck. Okay, she doesn't say bitch. Because it's funny because in Sisters, Fatima literally said, if a, if a man called me that, he wouldn't be living. But basically, um... Zach has his phone up. Hey, I got, you got, oh, you got this? Uh-huh. You you got that on me? Okay. Well, okay, you could put that draw four down. But guess what? I got a draw four for your ass here. Look at this. You hug, <laughs> hugged up with in. Is that what this is about? Okay, I get it. Fatima, I get where you're coming from. But the thing is, it looks shady. Okay, so she does tell the truth about the whole situation. I met up with him because he wanted to tell me about his sickness. He has can stage four cancer. Oh, that's what it is. Everybody got cancer now, huh? That's what it is. But things escalate further when Fatima assumes that because Deja was, you know, up on Zach in the photo and that Zach has glitter on his pants that they fucked. And, you know... <sighs> It gets crazy, but it is funny because of the fact that, um, you got glitter all over your fucking pants. It's fucking glitter. What's it? What's that mean? It's I fucked a box of glitter. Okay. That, that, that line alone is a 10 out of 10 because I laughed so hard at that. But you know, Fatima, she's about to leave. Oh, what, what? You going to leave in the car? I bought you, you know, fuck you and this car. And then... <laughs> I'm just like, because Bryce is trying to like, yo, man, come on, let's just go in the house. Zach, just go in the house. But he, Zach keeps running his mouth. So Fatima and Angela leave. But before they leave, Fatima's like, you better be careful of my next move. Watch my next move. Well, what's your next move, huh? What, what, what's your next move? What's going on? So we go over to Angela's house. And uh, Fatima's going to stay up in the guest room because, um, you know, she needs to just sleep it off and think things over before she makes her uh, decision of what to do next. And Angela, it, Angela is a weird character because when she starts talking, I'm usually like, okay, you're saying a bunch of nonsense, but then she, she, Angela is the walking embodiment of that meme floating around. It's like when you get, when you're, when you give your friends advice, but then you end it by saying, but I don't know, just in case things go wrong, so they don't blame you. That's what it seems like to me, because it seems like whenever Angela starts to say something, it's like, oh, here she go, dog and Zach, but then she'll change it. I mean, she'll say something at the end where it's like, okay, so it's like, you're, because I even have my notes, it's like, Angela is sowing seeds of doubt in Fatima's mind of, 
girl, I didn't. I know Zach didn't do anything, but I'm still freaking mad. And Angela's like, yeah, I know, I know, you're right, you're right. But what if Bryce didn't show up and pull him out of there? Do you think that Zach wouldn't have done anything? And I'm like, yo, don't be, don't be playing hypotheticals and what ifs. You're just going to complicate things, Angela. But then she does say, you know, well, Fatima, you know, he was mad and you should have told him. I mean, but yeah, he has the right to be mad, but that doesn't mean he has the right to go out there and do, you know, stupid stuff like he did. And they agree to that. But like I said, I'm very, Angela is a perplexing character. I'm very hot and cold about how I feel about it. I don't dislike her, but I just feel, I don't know how to gauge her as a character, especially on what happens in episode eight, but I'll talk about that when I get to it. All right, so Zach is still drinking, but Bryce cuts him off because he's too drunk and he helps him get upstairs because he's having trouble getting to his feet. So, um, this is where the scene just really starts to drag for me as a whole. The episode kind of felt like it hit, you know, the brakes and just stayed on this longer than it needed to. But this, and look, I'm not even really going to do a full on drunk Zach impression because I feel like my throat would be sore because it's such a long scene. You know, no, I'm just going to say it because I don't feel like it. Basically, you know, Bryce helps Zach get upstairs, sit him on the bed like, okay, man, you're good. I'm about to bounce. You know, you just sleep it off and talk to you tomorrow. But Zach, and I'm thinking to myself, so did Zach take a piss already? I don't know. Because I'm thinking to myself, Bryce, like, you know, hey, man, just go to sleep. And I'm thinking, man, he, he's pissed drunk, man. He probably going to, I don't know. But, um. Zach is talking about, yo, man, you always got my back. You good people, man. You good people. And look. You know what, man? Last time I was this drunk, because Bryce was like, okay, man, how, what was the last time you drunk this hard? I mean, this much. Karen, you know, she was messing around with this preacher named Aaron. So, more continuity there for Sisters fans. But uh, he's struggling to get undressed because he wants to take a shower. And Bryce is like, yo, well, look, you need to go to bed. And like, no, no, because I need to take a shower because if Fatima smells that girl on me, it's going to be all hell again. So, I need to go take a shower. Honestly, I don't think that was a good idea. I'm with Bryce that he should have definitely went to sleep because, first of all, look, yeah, hey, like, yo, we boys and everything, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now, if you go up in there drunk as a skunk and you fall down in the shower butt neck and I ain't coming in there to help you, so you better, I, I've helped you as far as I can getting you into bed, but, you know, getting you on the bed so you can lay down and sober up, but that's it. Because I don't want to drive home feeling guilty like, this nigga in the shower, he done drowned. And because I wasn't there to help him. But, um, no, it kind of really drags on due to the fact that Zach keeps talking about, you know what, man? We should, why well, women got to be like that? Well, that's, we're just different. We think different. We should get married. What? No, no, I mean, like, you know, your brain and Fatima's body, that, that, that would be it. Because we would get along. We wouldn't have to, you know, fight about all this stuff. And so... Bryce helps him to get his shirt off and everything. And this gave me have and have not vibes, both of Jeffrey creeping on Wyatt. And then at the same time, when Landon was trying to get with Charles, it's like, let me take your shoes off. What? Well, I'm just telling you that when you're president, you got to be willing to have people wait on you hand and foot. So then one night when they drank a lot and Charles was drunk as a skunk, he um, helped Charles get undressed. What he got his shoes and uh, then he got his shirt off, but then he got to the point where, you know, he took off his belt, but then he <laughs> undid the button and started to unzip Charles's pants. And then Charles was like, wait, what the hell are you doing? And then he literally sobered up in a second and kicked Landon out of the room. Now, in this situation, Zach got butt naked going into the shower because, you know, Bryce did help him get his, you know, shirt off and he to Bryce's credit he only assisted Zach when he was really struggling like he was about to fall over trying to get his pants leg off and whatnot but from there you know you could tell what was really going on here Bryce is you know getting horny for Zach but Zach goes to take a shower and when it sounds like he's because Bryce kept saying I'm going home and he's like uh you know what I think I'll stay here then and then when it sounded like you know Zach knocked something over or something in the shower and Bryce was like I can come in if you need me to no I'm good yeah so from there he actually goes over to Angela's 
and she thanks him for being a good friend and then she notices how hard he is and no i was um you know you're you're look at you you're just standing here in front of me baby i'm horny for you and then <laughs> he's like let's mess around no we can't fatima's going to hear no well you just have to be quiet you know i can't do that so she starts to fill up on him and then you know she goes down on him take care of that uh um lumber yeah baby yeah baby i'm sorry but the way bryce just says it cracks me up yeah baby <laughs> yeah so it's like while angela's you know down in front of him taking care of business it it you it seems to me like bryce i don't know he's thinking about zach that's i don't know that's just me i'm thinking about what's going on like i don't know I, you know we we know how tyler perry be writing this stuff all right, so uh, we go over to the next morning. Bryce actually goes over to Zach's place, okay? Zach, you know, hung over from last night. It's almost 9 a.m., but he's basically there to tell him about, hey, I uh, got your key uh, from last night, and um, there was a folder at your door. It turns out it's a signed lease that must have been left there from Val, and um, it's about Deja, the chick from last night, and it's like, man, I can't let her move in. So, what they're going to do is divvy things up. Okay, Bryce, um, everything in the office space is good. You go over there, pick up the keys. I'm going to try to get in front of this to see if I can stop this girl from moving in. So he calls Fatima, voicemail. He calls Val and says, look, um, is there a way to stop this? And she makes it clear that at this point, no, you gave her the keys last night. You told her, you know, she can move in. And she did say you saw her dance, so she could sue you for discrimination. So at this point, Zach has no choice. So we go over to Angela's again, and she's, um, you know, getting ready for her day. She's eating breakfast, drinking coffee. Fatima comes downstairs. She basically says she's going to get her stuff out of storage. She has some movers to help out with that. And she's planning to get all of her stuff from Zach's too. And that's the thing. Fatima is like, you could talk about Zach running back to his old ways all you want to. But Fatima is always quick to just, you know, pack up and leave when things get a little rough. Go back to Sister Season 4? Or was it 3? Trying to remember which one it was. Um, when When Hayden sent that recorded phone call and um this was after i think it was season three when you know um when zach went over to danny's house because karen wanted to see him and the whole thing is over it's over and uh you know fatima did the fake phone call to like downplay zach but then up you know say hayden is the man and then hayden sent that recording to zach so when zach got uh back to fatima's and said you know oh well me and karen want to work it out and Fatima's like, already packed your shit, it's at the door. That's Fatima in a nutshell. She always runs. But um, she talks to Angela about, you know, the Bryce situation. Bryce, you know, was, you know, downstairs making breakfast earlier that morning. She heard and also heard last night. Was he speaking Japanese? I had him calling out for his mama. So she's a bit suspicious over the fact that, you know, Bryce, you know, after he helped Zach out. He came in here hard as a rock. Do you think, you know, he was looking at them girls at the party? No, girl, don't even think of it like that. You know, he was just, you know, uh, trying to, I don't know. What the heck did she say? Basically, it's like, don't think of it as Bryce cheating or, you know, thinking about them other girls because he has you at home. It's like, yeah, he can have the fantasy of them party girls, but he has you here in reality. So it's all good. So from there, uh, Angela's like, so did you talk to Zach? No, my phone, I, you know, I cut my phone off. So that's why Zach got the voicemail earlier. So when Fatima's off in the corner getting her own coffee, Belinda bursts through the door. Hey, girl, look, I tell you what, Fatima over there acting a damn fool. And then Fatima, what? And she turns around and I swear, I'm like, Lord, Belinda, you about to get burnt with that coffee. But no, um, Belinda comes in just going on and on about, hey, I told you that Negro won't shit. And, you know, he's coming between us, and I don't like this. And it goes back to the video I did yesterday, wasn't it? Where I said, what, what is Belinda doing? Like, or what is Belinda trying to gain by snitching on Zach? And that's what it is. Apparently, you know, with Zach in the mix, it's really messed up the friend dynamic. But she's the one who came on to him. So I don't really know why she's acting like Zach is the problem when she's the one who really started all this mess. So 
you know, Fatima leaves before she ends up killing a bitch. And um, Angela calls her out for starting shit. Because, it, you know, Fatima's like, wait, but uh, Angela, did Belinda tell you she was going to do this? Basically, you know, she was just wondering if Angela was in on all this. But Angela wasn't. And then Belinda, you know, for acting like Fatima, the one who's tripping. So as soon as Fatima leaves, Belinda's like, shit. See, there, girl, girl, you did it again. This is just like at the dinner when uh, Zach got up and left. And Belinda's like, well, I didn't, what? I, I didn't mean to do that. Well, you did. You just kept running your mouth for no reason. So, um, then we get over to Zach's place and his brother Jeremiah comes over. And when I tell you, let me put it this way. I'm not rich. I'm not. Because, remember, I'm still living at my parents' house for the time being until I find my own home. But something tells me when I finally get a house, it's probably going to be like this. But, no, I'm going to have locks and security cameras. So, no, these people can't be coming up in here. And when I say these people, I mean, like, law, law, you know, family down the line that ain't do shit. So, we get a little history here. Uh, the fact that, you know, Jeremiah and Zach were slinging back in the day. Jeremiah got 10 years in jail while Zach only got three. So, he assumes that with the house and everything, the car, Zach must be doing something illegal. But, no, nah, he's legit now. And he wants 10K. He basically goes on. The, the actor here did a great job. He literally embodied. He personified. And I don't want to make this just a stereotypical black thing. But I'm black. So I can just only speak from my experience. This is how niggas be acting. Like when you get money. Like they say. Oh you know that's what happened. When, when niggas get a little money. They're acting funny. Is it really the people who get the money who start act funny? Or is it the people around them that start acting funny? Like Zach said, three years, three years since I moved here, nobody called me, nobody came to visit, I was broke. Soon as I get some money, all of a sudden we family, brother, mom must talk to me. Y'all don't want shit but money, that's all it is. His brother wants 10K, but the brother, his voice and everything, it really fit the bill, you know, like, look, when niggas get a little bit of money, let me hold something, I'm trying to be like you. Come on now, don't act funny now. It's a nice house. Yeah, okay. I saw that girl of yours last night. She looked fine too. And you know, this is literal this is literal toxic family relations. Because again, like I said, I, I when I start I remember when I quit my job, what my parents say, when you find a new one, when you find a new one. Struggled for like half a year, started doing my eBay on the side, started making real money. I'm not saying numbers, but I make more than my entire uh, household combined, both parents and my sister. And their, and their, and when we compare annuals, I'm making more than all of them combined. And the fact that I just think about the times where they were like, you, you shouldn't have quit your job. This is dumb. But here I am working out of my room, making money. That's how family is. Family is a bitch. It really is. It really is. That's not to say there aren't good family members out there, but when you look down the line of like the aunts and uncles who really never, and I don't want to make this video seem like a therapy session for me where I'm venting, but it's the truth. The family members who linked on to the other nieces and nephews, they helped them out when they were in college and whatnot. I didn't get any of that. Now they out there, some of them got, you know, criminal records. Some of them multiple kids multiple baby daddy baby mama whatever the situation but now they want to look at oh what's jeremy doing oh man you doing good no 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 don't talk. don't even look. some of these folks i ain't even seen in five years it's not even like a petty thing it's like hey you didn't look me up back in the day when i was struggling don't try to you know call me add me on facebook now that i'm making something on myself so this episode, while I did have like the whole Bryce and Zach thing in the bedroom, I really didn't think that was a good scene because it dragged on too long. This particular scene hit home because of how real it is to me. It's like these people who did nothing to help you on the come up all of a sudden feel like because I think Steve Harvey said this once like that's why you got to be careful when you come up in life because those people you were around back in the day just because you doing good and they see you doing good. They think they should be going doing good too when they've done nothing to contribute to your success, or they feel like that. Oh yeah, because you come up, I need to come up too. No, nah, it don't work like that. So in any case, he takes a tour of the house. <laughs> All right. So Fatima on her way back to uh, Zach. I'm just going to say Zach's place because at this point she's planning to move. So Margaret calls, and Ian apparently gave 
his mom Fatima's number, even though apparently um, Fatima asked him not to. So Ian, man, this motherfucker. Okay, so he's really sick. Ian is actually sick with cancer. He just doesn't look it, but he's really bad. She's happy that, you know, Fatima agreed to be there for us. I mean, and I'm just sitting there like, when did Fatima agree to this shit? I feel like Ian took what Fatima said and just ran with it. Kind of like with um Zach's brother. You give somebody an inch, they're going to go 10 miles. I'm not even going to say a mile, 10 miles. Because Miss Margaret sounds sweet, but I would have shut that down in a heartbeat. Like, uh, look, no disrespect. But that's not what I agreed to. And even still, Fatima, oh, yeah, yeah, he said that you found somebody else. Yeah, I have. Well, that's too bad. I guess it's too late now. Can you come by for dinner sometime? Look, I'll have to call you and see if I can make it. And I'm just sitting here the whole time like, this is just more of that, man, look, I get why Fatima's mad, but you you just digging a hole deeper for yourself. You can, like, take your shots at Zach, but you, you ain't a saint yourself now. I mean, I get it. You're in a tough situation, but you should have said no. All right. So Fatima gets back at, um, you know, the house just in time to see Deja moving in. She greets Fatima, and that's how the episode ends. So, yeah, while this episode was a bit rocky in places, mainly the bedroom scene with uh, Bryce and Zach, the whole Jeremiah thing, that just hit way too close to home. But that just goes to show how well the writing and the acting is because this is literally how shit like this happens. So with that being said, thanks so much for tuning in and don't let this being the lowest rated episode of the show deter you from watching it because it was still really good. Not every episode is going to be a 10 out of 10. So let's move on to episode eight in the next video. So like and subscribe, follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out when I post content and I'll catch you in the next video.